So yes, we're going to be talking about Crypto Knight ASICs in today's video, but again, I just want to say thank you guys for sticking with me while I am currently traveling on the road. It's going to be hotel rooms for a while. It's going to be my gracious, gracious family for a while. My wife, my three sons, everybody is piecing it together so that I can film these videos and get them out to you. So I thank you guys so much for the support while I'm on this trip in the States. I thank you guys so much that you're you're helping me out here and I want to just let's just jump into it so small scale DIY CPU and GPU mining is in a weird like almost limbo like state right now we've already squeezed about as much hashing power from our current hardware as we can while difficulty goes up and profitability is going down along with the price of the coins it's a sucky situation and it's actually about to get a whole lot suckier if you're primarily mining coins like Monero Electronium and other coins that use the crypto night out Algorithm. So you heard that right, Vega miners with your two kilo hash per second beasts then might be nigh. Why? Because the dreaded ASIC miners have come out to play with Crypto Knight and it looks like they'll be playing to win. That's right, both Baikal and Bitmain have revealed new machines that have their sights set squarely on the Crypto Knight algorithm and they'll be shipping out real soon. In this video, we'll take a look at what these new machines will be bringing to the table and what they'll mean for the GPU and CPU miners and gamers alike. But first, for those of you who need a refresher, an ASIC is an application specific integrated circuit and it's a miner that is a machine that's tasked with mining only one or two algorithms at most as, as opposed to graphics cards that are happy to mine a number of different coins across various algorithms. I mean, they're probably not happy about mining anything, but they don't have much say in the matter. Anyway, unlike graphics cards, which aren't generally designed for mining, ASIC miners are designed for it and they do it phenomenally well. So well that just a handful of them coming online pushes the mining difficulty of the algorithms they use through the roof, leaving the hardware in your gaming rig in the dust. We've seen it happen before with Bitcoin's SHA-256 algorithm, more recently with Dash's X11 algorithm, and now it looks like it's Crypto Knight's turn to receive the ASIC miner treatment of a swift kick in the butt right out the door. That, that sounded better in my head. Anyways. So the first miner we'll be taking a look at is Baikal's recently announced Giant N. According to its product page, the Giant N is Crypto Knight and Crypto Knight Lite miner designed to pump out a whopping 20 and 40 kilo hash per second on the two algorithms respectively. For reference, the best GPUs for mining Crypto Knight, Vega 56 and 64 only manage around 2 kilo hash per second on Crypto Knight with heavy optimization. So this thing is going to be 10 times that rate. Other than its crazy hash rate, the miner's other major selling point is its suspiciously low power draw. The product page lists the miner as only drawing around 60 watts from the wall. It's a suspicious number primarily because the aforementioned GPUs draw about triple that or more while mining. And by suspicious, I just mean it's odd in the context of how we're already doing things, not that they're lying about the actual uh, power draw numbers. So if that 60 watt number is real and not a typo, it would make the Giant N one of the most efficient ASICs we've ever seen. It's also a relatively compact miner compared to the other ASICs on the market and only weighs in at 1.8 kilograms or about four pounds for those of you who are in America like me. So Baikal doesn't list a price for the miner, asking that customers request the information via email. But according to Cryptocurrency News, who did just that, we, I mean, they did it for us, so we didn't have to do it. You're looking at paying $3,600 per miner. But before you get your wallet ready, multiply that $3,600 by six. So let's do that. 36 times six is is, is, is a lot of free money. I mean, it's probably, what, 21000 No, $21,600? That makes sense. I don't know. Quick maths. So, that's because by call, you're multiplying by six because by call is currently only selling the miner in batches of six. This is the time where I wish I had an extra digit on a single hand. But, if you did manage to somehow get your hands on just one miner for $3,600, what kind of return would you be looking at? Well, according to whattomine.com and calculated with an electricity cost of 12 cents per kilowatt, hour, you're looking at a return of about $16 per day mining Monero, $17.43 mining Electronium, and $15.31 on Sumo Coin. Calculating for a daily profit of $17.43, which is the most profitable one we looked at, you're looking at a return on investment time of around 206 
days. Keep in mind that the three coins we mentioned likely aren't the most profitable to mine, just some of the most established names, so the ROI time can be significantly lower depending on the coin you want. The miners are currently available to order via email and will apparently ship within seven working days after payment is received. Now, it's clear that the Baikal Giant N is a very powerful machine and could well churn out a pretty decent profit. But if power, power, power is what you're looking for, may we direct your attention to Bitmain's brand spanking new Antminer X3. Bitmain is known for producing some of the best ASIC miners around, and that doesn't look set to change when the Antminer X3 starts shipping on May 15th. The X3 also mines the Crypto Knight algorithm, but it's an entirely different class all of its own. The X3 somehow manages an absolutely brain-blastingly ludicrous hash rate of 220 kilohashes per second, which is over 10 times, no, it's, is it 10 times? Yeah, it's over 10 times what the, the Baikal one's supposed to do. So that means that this one machine produces 11 times the hash rate of the giant N. Of course, it does so at a significantly high power draw of 550 watts, but that's not even 11 times the power draw. It's also a much heftier machine coming in at a full seven kilograms or about 16 pounds. What isn't all that impressive is the machine's almost insanely high price tag of $11,099. Now that's more than most people's cars, and that's more than both of my cars combined. But still, it's less than your student loans. Ha <laughs> ha, reuse jokes are the best jokes. Uh, so using the same calculations as before, the X3 could bring in an eye-popping profit of $174.99 per day mining a Monero, $188.45 on Electronium, and $173.37 mining Sumo Coin. That means with the profit of $188.45, the X3's ROI time comes out to just shy of 64 days, which is kind of amazing for anyone who can actually afford the thing. So as always, when calculating anything in the crypto world, keep in mind that profitability is extremely volatile and your results may vary. So don't think that you're gonna pay that $12,000 off in the time frame that I allocated. And by may vary, I actually mean that they freaking will not be the same by the time you get your hands on one of these X3s or the giant Ns. As we mentioned just a few moments ago, mining difficulty goes up when ever a whack ton of power gets thrown onto the mining network. That difficulty increase means it's harder to get the coins you're mining and then you get less of them. Less coins means lower profit. The price of the coins could go up to offset the lower coin output as it did for a while with Bitcoin, but unless there's a giant price spike in the Crypto Knight coins, take out profitability numbers and throw them right out the freaking window because they're only relevant in the current climate that we're seeing right here, not when these ASICs finally hit the market. So now, as impressive as these machines are, one more so than the other, just like when ASICs first hit other algorithms, the main people really winning are the people who can afford to buy and run these things right up front, as well as the companies who produce them, obviously, because they've probably been running them for a while now, and now that the mining difficulty is past the point where they want it to be, they're gonna sell them off to everybody so that everybody can use them, and they can make more money, more money selling off these miners. Like, I always hear the argument people are just like, why doesn't Bitmain just use all of the miners for themselves? They do. And then when it gets to the point where they're not making as much money as they think they can off of selling them, that's when they start selling the units. They absolutely are mining. What are you kidding me? Like having the only ASIC on the market for Crypto Knight means that you're ma making sweet bank when nobody else can. So that's a really great position for them to be in. And that's what they do. And then they sell it off. I, I, I mean, tons of this is speculation, but that's pretty much what most people think they're doing. So everyone else that's trying to keep up with their GPUs and CPUs, you're, we're kind of out of luck. And that, that really sucks. When these things start coming online, the difficulty of mining Crypto Knight based coins will skyrocket so high that everyone mining with the hardware in their gaming rig or even their GPU mining rigs won't be able to keep up in the slightest. It's like a freaking Tesla racing a, 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 a the Flintstones. Your pedal power is not going to keep up with a freaking 1.90 to 60 rate. So this is especially frustrating because Crypto Knight was one of the algorithms praised for its ASIC resistance. And in case you're unfamiliar with the term, ASIC resistance means exactly what it sounds like. It's an algorithm that's hard to design ASICs for. These algorithms usually require memory or other components that are either too expensive or too difficult to implement into ASIC miners, but can 
can be found in many consumer machines. It's far more technical than that, of course, but you get the point. Now, there are many reasons as to why ASIC miners are bad news bearers for the coins that run on the algorithm they mine. The largest one being a larger chance of too few people having too much control over the network, thus moving away from decentralization, which is kind of the point, whole point of cryptocurrencies, and moves it towards a centralized location with everybody who can afford to actually have these miners. That's why currencies like Monero have stated that they intend to maintain ASIC resistance by swiftly reacting to any potential threat from ASICs and considering slightly modifying the proof of work at every hard fork. They also stated that at this point in time, we suspect that any newly developed Crypto Knight ASIC will not be egalitarian and will not foster a decentralized network. So basically, if ASICs present a threat to their decentralization, Monero, quote, will perform an emergency hard fork to curb any potential threat from ASICs if needed, end quote. Well, the threat is looking pretty real, and if Monero goes through with its plans, don't bargain on using either of the machines mentioned above to mine that specific coin. Heck, Baikal originally had Monero listed as one of the currencies in the giant ends reference coins, but then decided to remove it, most likely because of the impending fork on Monero, which is pretty telling. It's unclear whether many of the other coins using the Crypto Knight algorithm will also consider a similar step steps but all of that is outside of our area of expertise we're not really into speculating on coins monero has just said that they're going to be doing a hard fork which means that they're going to get away from these this buy call uh giant n and the ant miner x3 but then other ones like electronium and sumo coin are very much still going to be under the the reign of centralized asics so all of that's pretty sad but instead let's look on the bright side which is that gamers could very well benefit from the whole affair what are you talking about, you dingus? How could ASIC miners possibly be good for gamers? Firstly, don't call me dingus. It hurts my feelings. And secondly, it's good for gamers because many GPUs that mine the Crypto Knight algorithm really well won't be as attractive to miners. One of the primary reasons AMD's Vega GPUs were snatched up by miners in the first place was because they were Crypto Knight mining monsters. If these ASICs drive up the mining difficulty high enough, which they will, cards like RX Vega will have to be switched to mining on other algorithms that might prove much less profitable. And since miners are usually all about the bottom line, holding on to the cards or buying new ones might not seem like such a smart move anymore. I think this particularly spells a quick doom for Vega mining unless Monero can make a turnaround on profitability. Because Monero is the only one who's implementing a hard fork to get away from these ASICs, which means that they can be the only saving grace of the Crypto Knight algorithm for Vega right now. So Crypto Knight algos are really the only algorithms where Vega cards have shined. They have high Ethereum performance and otherwise, but they make no sense to buy in a market where you can get 75% of the Ethereum hash rate from an RX 570, which costs substantially less. You get 30 mega hash per second and on 570 you're getting about 40 to 45 on a vega it just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to buy the vega at its price point this could be the end of vega's dominance in the mining market which is both good news for gamers who wanted them for their high-end free sig numbers but could also be rough news overall vega just isn't a good gaming architecture right now or maybe not architecture but with all of the implementations of drivers and whatnot and games not programming for them they're not good at gaming especially when you compare them against nvidia and if they lose their mining capabilities to these asics they don't have have a great for gaming background to fall back on unlike an RX 580 or most of Nvidia's lineup. It's not that the Vega 56 and 64 will become useless, but they become disproportionately worse than they are currently and kind of go back to, you know, what Blind Run's initial video on them was, where they were just not a smart buy for a home miner. But this is just bad news for AMD because Vega was selling out because of how good it was with Crypto Knight, and if it doesn't have that leg to stand on, it's going to be a hard sell for saying, it has great Ethereum performance. It has great Zcash performance because it just kind of doesn't. So you have to move on to something else. But this could also be good for gamers because this previously ASIC resistant algorithm turned out to be not so resistant, which means that other algorithms that pride themselves on not being mineable by ASICs 
could follow suit eventually too. And if they do, and GPU mining is no longer viable, gamers won't have to compete with miners for their favorite cards anymore. Huzzah! So all in all, these two new ASICs are genuinely impressive, little, loud, hot, and profitable machines. But they're either good or bad news depending on where you sit on the fence. For people at Monero, they're bad news. For gamers who want a Vega card, they could be good news. For people who bought a ton of Vega cards for mining Electronium, probably bad news. If you can afford these ASICs, they could earn you a fair bit of cash, and their effect on the difficulty of the CryptoNight algorithm could lead to lower mark interest in GPUs, making gamers very, very happy indeed. However, if you are primarily mining CryptoNight on your gaming or mining rig, or care about keeping its network decentralized, then you're probably out of luck. But I want to know your thoughts. What do you think of the Baikal Giant N? What do you think of the Antminer X3? Are you excited for the fall of Vega? Are you excited for the rise of more profits from these ASICs on Crypto Night? Let me know your thoughts either down in the comments or over on Twitter. I'm at UF Disciple. And I don't have an affiliate code with either Baikal or Antminer, but if you happen to find any of these ASICs or other ones that are on Amazon for individual sale, you can use our Amazon affiliate code. That's in the video description. It won't cost you an extra cent, but it definitely helps us out here at the UFD Tech channel. and keeps the lights going on around here, except for these are hotel lights, and I, I don't pay for these. I mean, I paid for the hotel room, which you guys technically help for. So, I mean, it, it, it all counts. Thank you so much. Anyway, smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech-related content. I am Brett with the UFD Tech channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Cheers.